I started photography and the Fujifilm system three years ago. It has always been my system of choice for its simplicity. However, it quickly got neighbors, which pushed me towards the compromise and the decision, leaving behind a camera system that captured my memories. This is how it fared. Hello everyone and welcome back to Uncertain Release. Today I'm gonna make kind of a report on my switch from Fujifilm to Nikon. So I'm, I don't, I don't want this video to get too long so before I get any kind of sidetrack to anything else I have my notes. I'm gonna keep to my notes not make a 30 minute long video. So here we go. So what is the situation that I was in? So I had my full Fujifilm kit, which was X-H1, X-T2, I had the X-T1 in backup, kind of. Um, and I had my full kit, and I was doing pro gigs, even stuff, sports stuff, stuff like that, you know, generally. That was what I was doing in the early days of 2023. Fast forward to July, and in July, I got a new job. I got a full-time job, which meant that all those programs and stuff like that at the window, and uh, I'm mostly doing it seldomly right now. I'm not doing it as a full-time photography thing like I was doing before. Um, before I also had much more time to give to my photography, so I could I could use that time to shoot other systems. So on the side of that. You know, for Fujifilm kit that I had, I had my Nikon DSLRs. Uh, I also picked up uh, the Sigma SD Quattro H. Two systems which I really like, which ha which are like different and fun and stuff like that, but they aren't like mirror systems which I would do any kind of serious work with. Um, so I had a full Nikon system based on what my dad had. Maybe because he, he gave me his film lenses. I got a D700, made a video about it, yada yada. Uh, I got a SD Quattro H, made some videos about it, you can go check them out. But the biggest problem that I had is that I wasn't shooting pro gigs anymore. And uh, most importantly, I guess, I didn't have much time to, to, to give to like several camera kits. And what happened, really, is that uh, I found myself with two full camera kits and neither of which were like completely used. So I tried, with the help of the Fringer NFFX adapter, to adapt all my Nikon lenses to Fujifilm. I made a review on it, not super reliable, I wasn't ready to like give away most of the performance of my cameras to do that, so... It's a nice solution to adapt your Nikon lenses, but it's not like a, uh, you know, a complete performance solution, I would say. So, I needed, I wanted to stay mirrorless, and the way I got to do that and keep my Nikon lenses was to get with a Nikon Z mount camera, and this is a Z6. Why the Z6? Well, it was, it's pretty simple. Uh, with me mostly stopping doing pro work. Uh, I didn't need two card slots anymore, so uh, the Z mount like had some cameras which I never considered before, which because they had only one slot, which I could now consider it. Uh, and the Z6 is one of them, and it was the only one which was like affordable to me. The Z5 was also in the picture. The Z5 uh, doesn't match the X-H1 at all in terms of uh, performance. Uh, it doesn't have the same burst speed, doesn't have the same video capabilities, it's basically just a mixed bag of um, entry-level camera into a high-end body. Basically, that's what it is. Uh, the Z6, basically a perfect match for the X-H1, so I said myself I wasn't losing much by going with a Z6, and, um, well, I got a Z6 and I sold my X-H1, so 
that's it. That's that. Um, what did I sell to get the Z6? I had sold my X-H1. I sold my two Viltrox lenses, 85 and 56, and I sold my 23mm f2. I kept the rest, so the rest being the 25mm 1.8 I'm filming on, uh, my 35 f2, my 18 to 135, because these two lenses are the uh, two lenses I would have that I, that I would need if I wanted to travel with, with a camera, and I kept my 60mm macro from Seven Artisans because I don't intend on doing macro on Nikon actually, so since I already had it, figured I would keep it. Um, and uh, with the Z6, I got the 40mm f2, which is on the camera right here. I got the 28mm f2, and these two are the only two Z mount lenses I'm, I'm ever going to buy. Uh, the only reason I bought them is because they are small and light, and they, ha they are the same size, and they both have focal length I like. And uh, everything else is going to be with the FTZ adapter, with F mount glass, which I already had. Um, with the exception of the uh, 85mm f1.8, which I bought uh, for with the Z6, actually, but with a, at a very good price. So that's one of the perks of the f mount system. We're going to talk about that uh, a bit later in the video. So uh, is that switch beneficial? To answer that question, we need to... Uh, quick note, I also sold two f mount lenses, which I wasn't using anymore, with 300mm and 80 to 200 and basically I was even at the end of the day. And when it came, I basically sold everything for 1300 something and I bought everything for 1300 something. So basically evened out. Back to what we were saying. Um, to know if the switch was a good decision or not, we need to look at, uh, well, the pros and cons of my previous Fujifilm kit and my new Nikon kit. So the cons of the previous Fu Fujifilm kit are pretty obvious. Uh, and the biggest one to me was the fact that um, uh, the lenses were super expensive. I couldn't get the lenses I wanted to get uh, because they were just simply out of my budget, like plain and, plain and simple. Uh, if I wanted to get a 100 to 400, it would have to pay 1200 bucks. If I wanted to, to, to get uh, 70 to 300, it was more in the 850, 900 bucks. It was not affordable for me. And uh, same thing goes for the ultra wide stuff. Ultra wide lenses, well, uh, 10, to, 10 to 24, maybe 600, 700, if I'm lucky. Uh, it's 1000 brand new. Uh, if I wanted to get like a 12 to 24 equivalent, I would have to go for the 8 to 16 f2.8, which is, I'm not even going to start about that lens pricing, but uh, anyway. The, the point being is that Fujifilm might be a nice budget place for budget conscious for photographers because of their camera bodies, especially the X-T2 and the X-H1, I think they represent the best value right now in the Fujifilm ecosystem. But they're quickly going to be disappointed when it comes to lenses, because if they want to stay within Fujifilm branded lenses, they will have like trouble getting those for cheap. Uh, except maybe like the 18 55 and 35 f2, that basically the two only lenses that are affordable compared to, the, to their optical performance. Um, Otherwise, they would have to go for third-party lenses like Viltrox, like Sigma. And uh, Sigma is almost as expensive as Fujifilm, but Viltrox is quite a bit less expensive. But the le their lenses also are a bit more challenged, I would say optically. So you know, there's compromises to do, and I definitely went that way with Viltrox lenses. Um, that wasn't something I was super, you know, thrilled about. You know, like the Viltrox is. I hit my mic. Uh, the Viltrox lenses were okay, but um, they had more chromatic aberration that I would have liked. That made me work harder in post-production, yada, 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 you get the idea. Um, this is a problem that has been fixed on the Z6 with the FTZ because F-mount glass is available everywhere at cheap prices. My 85 1.8, which I just showed you a minute ago, uh, I bought that lens for 200 bucks. If I wanted to get an equivalent lens on Fujifilm, I would, that would have been the 56mm 1.2. Uh, that lens is like, I don't know, 500 bucks used for the first version, and it's way slower than this 85 and 1.4 autofocus. So, you know, there, there is always things to consider when it comes to uh, 
the budget that you're allowing yourself to put into your lenses. And for me, Fujifilm just wasn't doing it. The camera's brilliant. I love the X-H1. One, one of my favorite cameras ever when it comes to handling, features, price, value, etc. But when it comes to what you put in front of it, I, this, this is where I had kind of a problem with it. Uh, my current Fujifilm kit, which is my X-T1, X-T2 and those four lenses, this is perfect for me because it just frees my mind. <laughs> you know, I just have those two Fuji old focus lenses and these two 700 lenses, my manual focus ones, and I just use those in this in the situation that are required, and that's it. Uh, and if I want to get better image quality, better old focus, IBIS, or whatever the range I want to I want to get with my lenses, I have my Nikon system where it's easy to get lenses, it's affordable to get lenses. And there's always a ton of options for each focal length. So, you know, there's that kind of a space where we're sitting right now. Um, now, what, are, what were the positives of the Fujifilm system? Well, the biggest positive I could say was, first of all, press, press performance of the cameras, and second, the size and weight. The cameras weren't really, like, smaller or lighter. Like, the X-T2 is around the same size as the Z6, minus the, the deep grip. But um, when it comes to the lenses, the lenses were much smaller. If I compare my previous setup with the 56 1.4, for example, with my current Z6 with the FTZ and the 85.18, this is not even the same size category, right? So the lenses are much larger, doesn't help. The, the fact that I still use SLR glass doesn't help at all. But yeah, you know, you get the idea, I think, where full frame just going to be more expensive if you want to get zen mount but mostly bigger lenses and uh, cheaper if you want to get f mount so to me it was an acceptable compromise but that's still something i need to think about um i was able to kind of you know alleviate that with the help of those two small primes 28 40 mil uh same size same pricing and uh, really really small actually for full frame primes i wasn't expecting these lenses to be that ch that cheap and i got them both and i used them both and they are exceptional when it comes to image quality so no problem there uh one now for the um positives and negatives my fuji of my fuji <laughs> anyway of my nakon z6 kit uh well i basically talked about the lens situation, so I think you know what is my position about that. Uh, but another thing that I didn't really anticipate, uh, which I should have really, is the low light performance. Um, on my Fujifilm cameras, I wasn't like limited by ISO or whatever, but I was never pushing above the native ISO, and the native ISO was, uh, the top native ISO was um, 12,800. Uh, and I mean, it was pretty noisy images at this ISO already. But I was never going above that. 20, 20, 25,600? Forget about it. Just I'm just staying 12,800 and that's it. Uh, and I, I was okay, kind of. But with the Z6, I'm able to go much farther than this. And I've been shooting photos and in very dim lighting in like ISO 32,000 or something. And the images were still cleaner than my X-T2 at 6400 ISO. Which which is pretty mad, actually. <laughs> I wasn't anticipating that at all, and uh, I'm, I was pretty happy to see that, definitely. It was some, really something that um, uh, that made me, like, clicked in my head that like I just could use my camera in much dimmer lighting environments at the same aperture, and I wouldn't have any problems. I, I would even have, like, cleaner files. So, you know, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty nice. And uh, another thing that was pretty nice as well was the um, uh, the autofocus. Having a modern autofocus system with tracking boxes, several modes and stuff like compared to the X-T2 and the X-H1, which are, which are pretty limited, I would say, in autofocus, especially with the all the focus points being concentrated in the center of the frame and not being on the sides of the frame, which is definitely, you know, annoying <laughs> when you're doing video and moving around. Um, but um, yeah, that was, you know, mostly something that I was anticipating, unlike the low light performance. 
But uh, yeah, the pe people like to charge the Z6 for autofocus performance. But I do think it's a actually good old focuser. I was able to do bird in flight photography with the 100-400. I'm really, really happy about that. Like they, the camera was able to keep up. So, I mean, no problem there. From my point of view, the autofocus on Z6 is like stellar. In my opinion, it's the best autofocus system I've ever used so far. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with that switch, even though everybody was telling me that the Z6 was trash and I would, shouldn't get that camera. Don't listen to people sometimes, just test by yourself. Um, one drawback of the Z6, though, uh, is uh, the lack of video assist, I would say. Uh, on the X-T2 and the X-H1, I have access to F-Log. I'm filming on the, X on the X-T2 right now, so it's always super practical to have that like flexible file that you get in the end. And it is really something that um, that I missed on the Z6 for sure. I tried to emulate with a like faux log profile, but it is just not the same thing, not the same dynamic range, not the same shadow detail which is being retained at all. So to me, this X-T2 is still a better video camera, even though it doesn't have IBIS. So I'm just using the Z6 when I really need autofocus and when I really need IBIS, otherwise I'm using the X-T2. Uh, the X-T2 also has better preamps, so you know, there's that. So, but that doesn't mean that the Z6 is not a good video camera, it's actually a pretty brilliant video cam, uh, if I'm being honest. And uh, it's just me being picky, I would say. So, uh, yeah, also, I should mention, I have my notes right here, but I should mention the fact that it doesn't have um, dual card slots. Uh, it only has one CF Express Type B card slot, which is definitely okay, because it's more reliable than SD, and you don't necessarily need that safety net of dual SD slots. However, for your personal work, for my personal work, uh, I was really liking having dual SD slots to separate RAW files and JPEGs. And um, I mean, that led me on my cameras, which I have only one SD card. I'm generally just shooting RAW only and no JPEG because because I want to process those files anyway. And um, I don't want to sort them out on the computer. And that's what I've been doing on the Z6 so far. So it has like good picture profile control even though it's not as good as the Fujifilm cameras. But most importantly, it only has one constant, so I can't separate these files. So that's what, uh, that's a small negative, but not too bad of a problem, I would say. So, in the end, was that like a good switch or not? Uh, I would definitely say that it was a good switch. I would definitely say that it was uh, the ability for me to open new doors for my photography, especially when it comes to extremes, you know, of focal length, like super telephoto and super wide angle lenses. They were absolutely not available for me on Fujifilm because of their price. And now they are with F-mount lenses on a Z-mount camera. And that also means that if I get an F-mount lens, I can share it with my D700 or my D2H or my D300, all the F-mount cameras that I have actually. And that in itself is a pretty, pretty nice thing because that means that instead of buying a Fujifilm lens, which I'm only going to be able to use on my Fujifilm cameras, I can buy an F-mount lens, which I'm gonna be able to use on my Nikon Z-mount camera, Nikon F-mount camera. With the NFFX adapter, I can use it with some functionality being slower, of course, like the autofocus and stuff. But I can use it also in my X-T2 and my X-T1. And, I, and with that, if it's a manual lens, with that adapter, I can even use it on my Sigma SD Quattro H. So I can basically use it across like four systems without much compromises. And this is really, really something something that I, I didn't really, I, I, I kind of wanted to share my lenses, but being like, able to share across all my systems was not something I really anticipated as well. And uh, I, I think it's pretty nice, to, you know, to be a, to have that flexibility when it comes to lenses and especially lens purchases, because I mean, we can talk all we want about, you know, cameras and stuff like that. F f f photography is an expensive hobby, right? Lenses are expensive, cameras are expensive. They are a piece of gear, sure, but they are very very expensive compared to 
what we think it should be worth and yeah the less expensive the better for me <laughs> and if it works well well it works well it's good so that's about wraps it up with my uh conclusion of the switch from fujifilm to nikon fujifilm is a very good brand in my opinion this is one of the most interesting brands on the market right now and they are doing things right, I think. I still think that APC is the sweet spot for consumer photography and videography, but I mean, I can't deny what the Z6 has brought to my photography. I think it's one of the best decisions I've taken just to live a system with expensive lenses and have a system with like affordable lenses. And I think I get what people are talking about when they, when they are talking about the Sony E-mounts having that much third-party cheap lenses available. That's pretty. Pre that's pretty much what I'm feeling of, about the Nikon F mount on the on the Z6. So, yeah, it's great. Honestly, it's great. And the image quality that I get out of the Z6 is so far, I have so far no problems with it. The autofocus works great. The video works great. Uh, not as great as on the Fujifilm, but you know that's not too much of a problem in my opinion. So, was the switch good? Was it worth it? Was it like a good decision? Yes, to all of those questions. Um, do I regret things? Of course, I re of course I re I regret things. We always regret things when we, you know, this small stuff that we miss. And I do miss some stuff from the XH1. Like the top display was but was particularly nice. The, XH, the Z6 has a, a top display as well, but it's not nearly as good. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's about everything I wanted to say. So I'm gonna leave you with some photos I've taken with my Nikon cameras. There was some some into the mix that I've, that I've taken before that with my DSLRs, but uh, most of them I've just are with the Z6. Now, I'm gonna wish you a good day and see you in the next video. See ya.